All right, today I wanna to spend some time talking about everybody's favorite part of ELA to teach, grammar. Actually, I don't know that that's true. I know a lot of us don't like teaching grammar. And I'm sure you've tried a variety of things. Mentor sentences, going back to the beginning with like your eighth graders. Okay, we're gonna start the year over, we're gonna start with nouns, then we're gonna pronouns. You're gonna have the foundation for everything and then I can teach you the other things. And we're still struggling with our students in their application to writing. It's not, you know, moving over into the real reason that we are trying to teach our students grammar is so that they can become better writers, right? Um, so I wanna to talk to you about our three pillars of our EB grammar framework here at EB um, and really why we believe that these are the foundational pillars for students to be able to be successful, not just in learning about grammar, but then in applying grammar to writing. Um, so let's talk about what these are. So there are three pillars and the first pillar is direct instruction. Um, you know, for a long time, I know a lot of us kind of got away from this concept of direct instruction that was this um, resistance to the sage on the stage and us not necessarily being the imparter of knowledge, right? Which is fine, absolutely. There's a time and a place for everything. However, with grammar, it's very similar to math. We really have to teach our students directly the concepts before we can expect them to start putting it into a mentor text or something like that. And I'll tell you right now, I've tried mentor text in my classroom doesn't work the way that we intended to, um, to be successfully able to translate that into students' writing. Not to say that there's not a time and place, sometimes for mentor texts, we need to start with direct instruction. And so what that looks like, that might be a PowerPoint that you are sharing with your students. That might be, you know, from our EB writing program, a student facing video that explains the concept to students as students are taking notes, whatever it might be, but we really do have to first directly share this information with our students. So direct instruction, key, first place to start. The second thing that we believe here at EB um, are hands-on games. And I'm gonna give you some examples here in just a moment of what those could look like, what they might be, but these are ways that students can actually practice with these skills. So I don't know about you, but in the first couple of years of teaching grammar, you know, I taught high school English, we didn't necessarily teach grammar. Then when I went to middle school, it was a whole other ball game. But I do remember, you know, we do direct instruction and then we'd work on some activities in a book and students would just write it and fill it out and you know circle things or whatever and it wasn't actually sticking for my students and perhaps that's your own same experience well here with hands-on games we're making grammar engaging for them we're allowing students to use you know a different learning modality with actually participating with their hands and speaking and listening skills and all kinds of things when it comes to grammar games and i'll show you some examples like i said here in just a moment um, of what this looks like but it's really powerful for students to actually have that hands-on practice again i liken uh, grammar to math so when students are working with math manipulatives, it's not necessarily the same exact thing, but we do have that kinesthetic learning that's um, happening for our students when we utilize hands-on grammar games. So this is something that you definitely wanna make sure that you're incorporating into your um, curriculum. So I'm gonna show you an example of a grammar game right now so you can see it in action, and then we'll pop back to this video so that you can see our third and final point. So I want to show you the example of, you know, one of our games, a hands-on game, and this is specifically for conjunctions. So students are going to have, you know, this game board that has a start section and end. They have like little game pieces that they can work with. Of course, they could use like an eraser or something like that too. But then there's a spinner that comes along with it as well. And essentially how it works is, you know, a student spins the spinner and they move their game piece to you know, the place on the game board that matches what they spun. And if the space on the game board happens to be a sentence, the player that lands there must read the sentence aloud and identify the conjunction in the sentence. And then everybody else has to agree you know, that the conjunction is identified um, that is accurate by that student. And you know, play continues essentially until one player reaches the end of the board game. And so what's great about this particular activity is that students have the opportunity to practice, right? To do something that's fun, to be engaged in conjunctions with their classmates. And what's cool too, is that students can come back to this activity over and over again. Once you print it out one time, you have it ready to go. You utilize it again and again with your students. Um, and it's just a great way for students to have the opportunity for that consistent hands-on learning. All right, and then the third component of our approach to teaching grammar, our EB grammar approach, our three pillars, is now application to writing. 
And so what we're doing here is we're taking the concepts that we've taught our students and now we're applying it to obviously their writing. And so what does this actually look like in practice? How do we do this effectively? How do we ensure that it's working for our students? And so I'm going to dive into a separate video with you so you can see what we use at EB in our EB grammar program is a checklist of application to writing. So if we've just taught our students about the various conjunctions, okay, well now how are they taking that and putting it into their next writing sample that they're composing in our class? So let's go ahead and dive over into that. I'll show you that as an example so you can see it in action. I'm gonna quickly show you, you know, what application to writing actually looks like. So if we're focusing on a skill, um, like using conjunctions, we would just share this with our students and we'd have them go through this writing check. You know, are my coordinating conjunctions used correctly in my writing? So boom, they're checking that off. Do I have subordinating conjunctions used correctly? Correctly, etc. Um, and then for our students that want to challenge, we can go here, right? We can ask our students to use and underline each of the following in their writing. They can include more if they want to. So it makes differentiation really easy. But what we're doing here with this is we're not, you know, covering all of the grammar standards that we've taught our students in this one writing check. No, we're being hyper focused on a specific skill that perhaps we just taught to our students. And then of course, throughout the year as we build, we can incorporate these again, that spiral review of these concepts with our students. All right, so hopefully you can see that when all three of these pillars work in conjunction together, we are allowing our students the opportunity to practice with the grammar standards multiple times, but then actually start to see it in action in their writing. Why it matters. Why are we learning about conjunctions? Why are we learning about, you know, the rules around verbals and gerunds and all these types of things uh, so that we can communicate right with our word, with the written word, with our verbal communication, etc., cetera, um, so that our students can be set up for success in the future. So if you found this video helpful, definitely share it with other middle school ELA teachers that you know and subscribe where you're watching this video.